Welcome back to the Morning Blend. When it comes to getting a more sculpted body, liposuction is a proven solution time and time again. Yeah, it can remove excess fat deposits from your chin, your neck, your abdomen, your back, your arms, your butt, your hips, your thighs, wherever you need it, even maybe on your wrists. Go on and on and on. Oh, where else you have it? Your ankles. All right, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Joining us now to discuss some commonly asked questions about liposuction is board certified plastic surgeon Dr. Daniel Butts, along with his surgical coordinator, Jamie Cook. Thanks for being here, you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Hi guys. Yeah, so here Here's the deal. I think a lot of people want to know about liposuction. It's one of those things you think, is this just something elite for the stars? Is this something we all can kind of take advantage of? Um, what do most people kind of ask you most often about liposuction? I think that'd be a good question for you. Yeah, I mean, most people are kind of looking to improve their overall contours and, you know, they've read about cool sculpts and some of these other options out there, which are great yeah. options uh, for certain patients, but it's good to have kind of all the options available. And liposuction can really help address those areas that just, you know, diet and exercises haven't been able to, you know, really properly treat. What is, I think most people think they know what liposuction mm -hmm. is, but how do you describe it? Essentially, we're removing unwanted kind of areas of fat using very tiny incisions and sucking it out, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. in a very, you know, sense, you know, contour sensitive manner to give you the, you know, the shape you're looking for. It's not a weight loss technique. It's really the goal is to improve the shape and contour. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I kind of mentioned some of the, the places on your body that you can use liposuction. Are, are those the most common ones or what, what do most, I usually think of the stomach area yes. as being the most common. Mm -hmm. So the stomach's gonna, going to be the more common area that people kind of have some concerns. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's usually their thighs, their hips, um, their lateral breast area, arms, chin, neck. Really? Something. What what do you suggest patients do to prepare for a procedure like liposuction? So with as with any procedure, you're going to want to um, use any non-essential medications and herbal supplements at least 10 to 14 days prior to surgery, just to avoid any complications. Oh, okay. Oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. But even herbal um, vitamins and things like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Who tends to be a good candidate? Is it somebody who has a little bit of fat, or do you have to have a certain amount of excess fat? You know, it's what's really important is that you're at an ideal body weight, and you don't want to have just lost 50 pounds and say, okay, oh. now I want to you know get a little bit extra improvement. You kind of want to be at a stable position and kind of happy with where you're at, and then you can kind of improve the contours there. Um, but, you know, there's not really a true weight cutoff. Um, you know, more more appropriate BMIs are generally get a better outcome, but you can still make some pretty imp big improvements. And you can do it in office? Some smaller volume areas you can do in the office. When we're doing more kind of circumferential all around the body, it's a little bit more comfortable to do it under anesthesia, but um, mm -hmm. to, yeah, we can definitely do smaller areas in the office. What is the recovery like from liposuction? How does it compare to other procedures? It's, you know, afterwards you're a little sore in the, you know, wherever you do the liposuction, smaller. If you're doing one location versus multiple, it's a little bit, you know, different recovery but most people are up and doing things the next day. You're not, you know, confined to bed or anything like that. You have to wear a compressive garment for mm -hmm. typically four to six weeks. It kind of helps just kind of guide the skin kind of retraction process, mm -hmm. minimizes bruising and swelling. Um, but most people are back to doing what they want to do, you know, five to seven days later, back to work even That's earlier. That's pretty quick. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's really not terribly long. Yeah. What does someone do um, <laughs> to begin their journey? Is it is it a consultation that you do? Because I would think a lot of people don't know what's best for them. They maybe have something in their mind that they think they'd like to do, but they're not really sure. Yes, so the best first step is obviously just to give us a call. You can ask for me, um, and then we'd be happy to set up a consultation with Dr. Butts to discuss any of your options that might be available. Mm -hmm. do, do most people have realistic expectations? Do you feel like um, if they consider this procedure? Well, that's part of the consultation process is to describe what you can expect and what is a realistic expectation. Because um, yeah, it's not, you know, we can't take all the fat out. We want to leave you with nice contours. We don't want to leave any problems afterwards. Um, so that definitely is an important part of the process. Mm -hmm. One of the things you said is if you've lost a lot of weight, you may want to wait a bit. How long, because I think a lot of people, this is something they consider when they've lost a lot of weight too, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get, they're getting to that place as well. So if that's the case, how long do you need to be stable? Is six months enough? Six months is the general kind of guide where, where you know, you wait that long, it's been shown that you can kind of maintain that weight and okay. then it's a safe time to either, you know, if you have extra skin that needs to be excised, sometimes that's necessary as well. Would you do that um, at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. You do? Yeah. Okay. What, and uh, switching gears just a little bit, why did your office decide to uh, support this organization called Free the Girls? Because we talked oh, yeah. about that, I think, last time you yeah. were here. I just think it's really neat that you do that. You know, if we were thinking like we, you know, we have a lot of patients that are doing breast surgery on that they're 
changing their breast size. They have all these extra bras. And then I kind of came across the Free the Girls kind of organization, and it just seems like a great way to reuse and re, you know support these women that have you know been freed from uh, you know sex trafficking and allow them to get back into a you know a, a productive life that they can you know, support themselves with. So it's a great organization. Um, you know, they, you can put to use your old bras that you're not no longer using. Yeah. So it's sports bras, nursing bras, camisoles. Yeah. All of those things are welcome. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. You know, gently used or new is preferable. Um, yeah. Clean, obviously, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's yeah. that's really great because you oftentimes, I mean, you don't think about it. You're like, oh, can I donate this right. to Goodwill or what? That's a really great organization yeah. to do it. So anybody, not it doesn't have to be a patient. They could drop off. Anybody, yeah. They can drop absolutely. off their Anyone bras. Their so again, uh, you can donate gently used bras you can get 10% off though your next skincare purchase when you do that it's at myquintessa.com slash free the girls to learn more about that such a cool I love that you're doing that and here's where you can call for a consultation for Quintessa it's 1-800-499-4309 you can learn more at lipo at myquintessa.com slash lipo or schedule that consultation to find out if you're a good candidate for the procedure as well thanks so much you guys thank Great you to see you both yeah. thank you